hi this topic is artificial selection so you know as the name says uh, the selection it's not natural selection but it's an artificial selection so anything artificial has a connotation about human intervention isn't it so we are the one who is selecting that is exactly what it means artificial selection so it's something like selective breeding isn't it so that is what uh, the selection is so wait a second let me have a cup of coffee i love coffee So by the way, the coffee which I'm having, uh, have you seen the coffee beans? These beans are sourced from, uh, you know, I hope you can see it. This is from Kerala, you know, the Western Cuts. Uh, this is a really nice coffee. But by the way, this is not expensive coffee. The most expensive coffee in the world, Enigas, it's also production of artificial selection, you know. Yes, yeah, so this one is called, uh, the coffee is known as, uh, exotica or kopi luwak uh, this is uh, this is from indonesia i guess and this indonesian coffee is very special because do you know why who is selecting it so here this is not really uh, artificial selection this is you know the uh, human we are making use of uh, the natural selection to select the best uh, tasting coffee beans these are basically the, the coffee beans what you can see are nothing but fruits isn't it so these fruits are being selected by this cute little animal called civet asian palm civet which is a carnivorous mammal okay so this mammal love coffee beans uh, rather coffee fruits like this small small berries and uh, you know it, it has got a very good olfactory sensation that means smell it can smell the best tasting coffee beans though we cannot select it even by looking we don't know what is inside the coffee beans right or how the beans turned out to be right so this clever little cute animal uh, called civet chooses the best coffee beans and what what will happen okay they ate it then how are we going to get this uh, you know the, the most expensive coffee beans in the world recently said the animal do not digest it it just uh, you know of course it digests the uh, you know the, the berry but uh, the beans are being excreted through its excrement and we human beings we take the excrement you know the, the coffee uh, I mean this uh, palm civet's excrement to see that so what we do is that we go to the, uh, the forest regions in Indonesia we look for the civet's excreta you know and then we take out that yucky isn't it so we take out that yucky uh, excreta uh, we simply take out the, the beans the undigested beans and you wash it dry it and market it as the world's most expensive coffee how is the story of kopi luwak so here it is basically a, a natural selection but we mediate it isn't it and these days kopi luwak my one of my friend visited the factory what they do is it's not really uh, you know the uh, uh, the foraging isn't it the forest foraging for the excrement of the this civet so these days they captive breed this organism so they, they put the civets in, in the cage and you feed them the beans and then you take out uh, you know in the, in the excrement so i don't think that is a, a really nice uh, leveraging mechanism to make use of natural selection so the best is uh, you know you have to hunt for the excrement in the forest right if you uh, free range the civet in the forest yeah so adaptation is exactly what the artificial selection or rather selective breeding is right so artificial selection is because of the adaptation so uh, you might have seen that in your everyday life for example uh, you know the the rats isn't it so uh, the traps that you put in rats keep on evolving to become cleverer day by day as the generation pass by our old strategies of catching the the rats are no longer working isn't it so uh, and so as the the mosquitoes you see so the the repellent resistant mosquitoes are emerging isn't it they became smarter so it's it's kind of a uh, you know it, it is a, a linguistic mistake you see 
so it's not exactly they are becoming smarter but it's because of the natural selection is being in force you see you're because you're putting a, a constraint of this chemical uh, rep, mosquito repellent then only those uh, variations can survive only those variations that survive in this chemical uh, you know the, the repellent can able to reach the maturity reproductive maturity and they can breed and the next generation will be more or less uh, the original survivors genes you see so that frequency of the alleles changes in the generation that exactly is what you call it as molecular evolution you see or evolution you can define evolution as change in the allele frequency uh, of the population over time or over generation is called the, the evolution is that so drug resistant bacteria is yet another example of the artificial selection you know uh, post penicillin uh, has been discovered uh, you know by uh, invented by uh, Alexander Fleming it was a serendipitous discovery isn't it now that we have um, uh, you know preponderance of uh, drug resistant bacteria especially methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus mrsa is a growing problem or multi drug resistant tuberculosis so tuberculosis is by mycobacterium tuberculosis right and uh, this mycobacterium very interesting uh, bacteria it doesn't even have any cell wall but still it's very very tough to treat it isn't it so normal uh, tuberculosis is no more a problem and even of course you all have uh, a, a, you know the the vaccination right bcg vaccine to a certain level we are protected but when we get some immunosuppressive uh, therapy if, like for example after the transplantation organ transplantation you have to take some uh, steroids and other immunosuppressants so in that time you are more riskier to for the tuberculosis or if you have aids hiv aids also usually lead to the tuberculosis the third uh, thing is the post covid 19 the you know that is also now uh, getting detected the, the uh, prevalence of the tuberculosis in the recovered patients of the covid 19 so in any case the tuberculosis we still have to deal with it and only way is by penicillin or other uh, uh, you know the antibiotics but many forms of this uh, tuberculosis you cannot even treat it with the antibiotics or because of this artificial selection friends or another example is rat snakes so these snakes rat snake because they, they rattle they make the noise under under you know it's a subterranean noise if you walk I can detect the the noise of the human footprints you know so rat snakes especially in the US they have evolved to be more silent to escape from the human hunting in the United States because the hunters can see okay there is a snake in the vicinity because they are rattling right and uh, if uh, this snakes the generations after generation the snakes became silent then of course that is uh, you know there is a strategy to escape the the predation isn't it or the elephant the elephant tusk also is now getting shorter and shorter that is also a response to artificial selection because uh, you know the the hunters are looking for ivory isn't it the tusk of the elephant so if you have if you're a male of course only males have the tusk elephant male elephant having a, a longer tusk is it good for you earlier days yeah because you can attract the female that is called sexual selection but these days having a longer uh, you know the tusk is no longer advantageous it's more, rather it's a disadvantage because you are more prone for hunting by the hunters right so that is why uh, it's not that consciously uh, the elephants are making you know a smaller side tusks that is not the case but those which are which have this uh, inability to make longer tusk are being selected because of the human intervention in the selection so that is called artificial selection i hope you got the message see many of the vegetables are product of the selective breeding you know so artificial selection is nothing but uh, selective breeding isn't it so it, it could uh, lead to uh, various forms of the species the subspecies for example it's not really speciation but rather uh, origin of uh, varieties within the same species so all these vegetables are what we now call it as cauliflower or broccoli or cabbage calais 
kohlrabi all this looks very different and of course uh, you know uh, we, we can call it as different species by appearance but no these are all just same species can you uh, you know can you guess it? it it all belongs to the same species it's all from wild mustard and even today uh, you know you can you can breed a broccoli and cauliflower together no problem because they both are the same species brassica oleracea you know so that is the beauty of this uh, artificial selector the speciation uh, or subspeciation because of this artificial breeding so breeding is very common uh, that is what the, the the roses are right we have like thousands upon thousands of rose breeds with very very crazy names isn't it so as you know dog pure breeds right uh, pedigrees of the dogs and cats right and so many of these domesticated animals like cow we have several breeds all because of the artificial selection through selective breeding you know so traits that we select under the domestication are generally disastrous that is one thing you have to think of whenever we in uh, do we select for like a, a sweet tasting potato for example or tomato or seedless grape seedless grape itself is disastrous for the grape if there is no seed then uh, what is the point of having only the the fruity part of its uh, the, the fruit you know so that makes no sense isn't it that is like simply wasting the resources so but yeah we have breeded for this kind of seedless grapes or watermelons or oranges right all these we can have the seedless varieties too or even uh, apple you know these are not true to its seed the apples so uh, you take out the apple seed of course uh, do you know apple seeds are toxic you know, if you eat in a, high, a lot of uh, in a big quantity this apple seed you might die because it has got cyanide cyanide you know say it so be careful not to eat uh, the apple seeds one or two is okay no issues and now apple seed if you plant it and the tree you're gonna get apple tree are they going to be the same as this uh, apple no in one apple I mean you will get different kinds of the apple trees you see it's not true to its seed because whatever the apple that you have is because of the, the selective breeding you know in tomato, the, the molecular biologists have located into a gene called FW2.2 that repress the cell division, uh, which is pretty low in cultivated varieties. But in wild tomato, it is very high. Because uh, why do you need this uh, repressed gene? You know, cell division should be fostered, right? You need to get a very big, nice looking tomato. So that is why, uh, you know, in the cultivated variety, the gene is pretty low but uh, in the wild variety it's pretty high and it's not because uh, we are consciously looking at the gene level while breeding no plant breeders are not molecular biologists they don't know but they have no idea how these you know these uh, uh, various morphotypes what is the genetic mechanisms behind it isn't it so that is what the latest molecular biology studies can trace you know so into certain genes responsible for certain morphotypes or morphological features you see so that is exactly uh, the studies have shown so another kind of study is of fas gene false gene that is associated with increase in the fruit size you know is high in cultivated uh, tomatoes but very low in the wild so it's a vice versa fw2.2 and fast gene as I told you, it is not uh, consciously playing with the genes, but this is because of the selective breeding. You know, uh, plant breeders have been breeding for certain quantities, and later on, we can actually locate this quantitative trait loci QTL map into the genome. So that second step happened with the advent of molecular biology, of course. And if you know that, armed with QTL map of the genome, now you can design certain uh, you know certain like CRISPR Cas9 mediated you know gene expression so you can express this gene more or repress these genes you know so all these things you can you can work on right now with this data on right though it is it still remains expensive but there is a good future for it uh, yeah so this breeding is very common and if you look at this uh, uh, breeding the, the uh, ramifications of breeding it's very interesting to check the archaeological artifacts so if you look at the archaeology you will see that 
uh, the maize cob, the, the corn, you see. So corns after eating we throw out the, the maize cob, isn't it? The cob, of course, we cannot ingest it. So human beings simply throw out. If you look at the cob size through the years, for the last uh, thousands of years, so you will see a pattern. Oh, very old cob, very primitive cobs were very small in size. But now you can see that the corns, cobs have tremendously become large. How it happens? Because of our selective breeding. Because we are breeding the, the maize, the maize for a better and better, uh, you know, uh, quality. Quality in the sense, it became, you know, the fruity, meaty, isn't it, the, the corn. So this, the opposite is true with the elephant tusk, which I told you. It's getting shorter and shorter. Uh, the reason is hunting, you know, hunting for the ivory, isn't it? Because of our inordinate fancy with ivory tusk uh, for the, the, you know, the, this kind of uh, a rare, a rarity associated with quality. The many people, the super rich people are hunting for the rare items because they associated rare items with luxury, which is incorrect, you see. And uh, yeah, there is a very interesting uh, story about this selective breeding in Japan. I have been to a place in Japan called Danura. Uh, you know, it's it's basically it's a it's a place in uh, Japan's inland sea. Danura is basically the battle name. It's not the place name. Battle of Danura. Uh, the place is called Inland Sea. So this area is where a very infamous battle happened between. Uh, Haike and Genji. So Haike was a reigning, uh, you know, samurai clad, and uh, uh, unfortunately Haike's, uh, you know, the, the the main samurai dead, and then only the the small boy was the one who is fighting this battle uh, for the Haike. While Genji is a uh, the newcomer, you know, the their opponent, isn't it? And they had a ferocious war in this. Uh, this uh, Danura in this bay of this inland sea and then what happened is that uh, the Heike was completely collapsed and Genji cut throat all the Heike warriors they killed all the warriors and they threw out the dead bodies into the sea and then after this battle the fisherman started saying a myth okay in that area that uh, this kind of a crab you know if you look at the crab so you will see this sort of some crabs have this sort of uh, facial character you know so pareidolia you remember i told you about right so we are very good at detecting the face so uh, looking at the crab you can see a, a face of an angry samurai in it so those time just after the battle only very few crabs have this kind of quality you know but because of this cultural integration with this myth you know the superstition People started saying that whenever you get this kind of crab, these are nothing but ghosts of Haike. And the name of the, the scientific name of this crab is also Haikia Japonica. In Japan, this uh, Japanese is called Haike Gani. Gani Kani means uh, the, the crab, you know. So Haike Gani is the crab of Haike. You know, Haike is the, the samurai clad that, that, that lost the, the battle of Danora. So Haikya Japonica is a very good example of artificial selection. Do you know why? Because the fishermen, whenever they get this, they throw out. So if you were a crab, then you would better like to have this kind of character in its body, isn't it? In your body. The reason is that if you have this kind of ferocious samurai looking crab, the chances of survival is very high because fisherman is no longer interested to eat you they will throw you out and by throwing your chance of survival and reproduction is increased and because reproduction is increased as generation pass by the frequency of alleles coding for this phenotype keep on increasing its frequency and that is the reason uh, you know this evolution happens so artificial selection happen in uh, unintentional artificial selection this is unintentional you see so it was not the uh, it was not what fishermen want the population of this uh, you know uh, this ghost uh, kani that is uh, uh, this crab 
you don't they don't need to increase it they rather they would like to have it decreased but what they did is just by act of throwing out it contributed in increasing its you know increasing its uh, frequency it's like cobra effect isn't it so cobra effect is basically when the petitioners came in india they want you know they had this pestilence this this problem with the king cobra you know a lot of cobra bites in the petitioners time and at that time the british uh, think tank they brainstormed what to do with this uh, cobra po problem in india how to get rid of it then they devised incentivization that any indians during the british raj time you know any indians anybody who brings cobra dead body then we will pay them rewards 1000 rupees per cobra so everybody was super happy they started hunting for the cobra in the wild and they started giving this cobra so of course the cobra problem started slowing down but then what happened is a very interesting thing happened okay that indians thought okay so it's a it's a potential revenue maker king cobra so let us breed them <laughs> they started collecting king cobra and of course his partner queen cobra is that king cobra's female they started breeding and they started mass producing there were cobra factories near uh, you know uh, delhi and all and then they started selling this cobra <laughs> to the britishers you see so uh, whatever the intended uh, you know the the solution backfired that is exactly what happened here all both of this uh, cobra effect is also because of selective breeding you see very interesting isn't it so nowadays this is how it looks like uh, this haikigani in japan no it's really ferocious looking uh, samurai ferocious samurai looking crabs which are very common uh, you know in uh, in this uh, inland sea of japan all because of that myth cultural myth very interesting is it so in japan this uh, dannora this is a very famous wood block prints so these are the wood blocks the, the japanese use it uh, as a screen from one room to another room japanese traditional houses are very beautiful it's all purely wood with tatami flooring tatami is basically rice straw you know so they reuse this rice straw they don't burn it rather they make use of it by making the mat you know so this is a wood block you can see that this is exactly the kani is also the this haike kani you see that this is samurai crab so genji and uh, heike so all heike warriors were killed in this uh, the nor of battle you see so yeah so i first came across this very interesting story very very many many years before even i went to japan when i read this book carl sagan's cosmos it was there so i read this book when i was in school if you haven't read yet i strongly suggest you i recommend you this book it's a fantastic book okay so it's a the most popular popular science book in the world cosmos so check it out and uh, yes yeah, so this is the same thing like uh, you know uh, if if uh, let us propose that we all are meeting after 30 or 40 years how many of us will be millionaires 40 years means i will be very old that time and how many of you will become millionaires if we do an alumni meet all of you become millionaire is it possible it's not possible right because of a concept called inflation so variation is the key for economics you know so of course the capitalism works because of the variation if you kill that variation then the, the capitalism is no more effective isn't it so it's natural system right even in the nature of course uh, the abilities are different variations are there variation is caused by the mutation on our dna structure so variation is natural you know and if you uh, you know artificially try to uh, you know disseminate this variation for example uh, marxism uh, which is rather a form of socialism uh, you know it doesn't actually lead, it's not a long lasting solution i mean if you're uh, really looking at the marxian utopia for example there are so many states that failed to the marxian point of view uh, one good example would be uh, ussr you know it's completely collapsed isn't it and um, uh, south american countries to several of the south american nations have collapsed all because of the 
uh, this one the, you know the, the socialism because it is not natural it is artificial you see and uh, yes yeah, so struggle for existence is really important and see the variations are not you are not making it variations are because of the uh, the mutation the mutation is the it's completely random you see and some random sports darwin used to call it as a sport you know so basically variants are more adaptive and these adaptive variants are differentially selected the so called natural selection that we will see that in uh, subsequent slides okay so uh, yes yeah, so variation is the key both in economics and evolution i told earlier as well these two disciplines are quite similar economics and evolution so as economics and ecology both are really interesting 